Your story doesn't matter. It's the reaction. You know, when I first started trading, I remember good news. I used to follow news. Good news used to come out. And you think, figures are really good, and the price would go down. And then you'll see bad news come out, and the price will go up. You've got to remember, stock markets look ahead. What you're seeing, what's happening now, in many cases, it's already factored in. Yeah, the classic is oil. War is declared in Iraq. What happens to oil prices? Go down. And everybody says, no, it should go up. Well, no, because it had already been factored in ahead of time. And many times, when the event actually happens, it now clears the air because the market is already now looking to the next thing. So, you know, be careful about sometimes when people start reading things and it's not what you expect. Very important to realize, why do markets go down? It's not because people start selling. It's because people stop buying. Okay? And again, this is the same all around the world. It's the same for the property market, the art market. Remember we said it was a pyramid. And I believe markets are a pyramid. Okay? And it is a pyramid scam. If you come in in the morning and there's no buyers as a market maker, you mark the price down. And you keep marking the price down until you find buyers. Okay? And then in that term, we start to come up. So it's very, very un important that you understand that to keep the market moving forward, you need new fuel. You need new suckers, basically, to come in and keep buying, to keep pushing it up. And also remember, you know, every seller basically wants the highest price, every buyer wants the cheapest price. Now, sometimes people say, oh, there's been more buyers than sellers today. Well, that's not true because there's always a buyer and there's always a seller, isn't there? It's always got to match up. The price they paid could be different, um, but you know, every buyer matches a seller. So it's always, it's always got to match up between the two. The other thing you've also got to understand is contra movements. The biggest down move happens in an up market. And some of you saw what happened to gold just recently, where gold basically dropped you know, $40, $50 very, very quickly. Does that mean that the whole thing for gold is over? No. What you tend to find is when something is going up, especially quickly, you'll get sharp down moves. Okay? Shakes out all the weak holders, gets all the weak people stopped out, and then we're off again. And same again, when we're in a down market, we get some big spikes up. Okay? And again, this could be any market. But understand, nothing goes up or down in a straight line. Most people in this business are undercapitalized, the small traders. What do I mean by that? They're carrying too big a trade for the size of their account, or they've put the stop in the wrong place. And I see this all the time. I run something and, called the uh, It's a lot simpler than you think. When we buy stock, remember what you're buying. Worthless pieces of paper. Okay? Whether you go long on any share. And now you don't even get the paper anymore. We don't even use the certificate. Nobody needs this. And the illusion you know, as the price moves up and down, you know, like with a painting. A painting's not worth 60 million. Some of you have probably seen the art market's on fire at the moment. It's doing very, very well again. And a lot of that money is money that's been siphoned out of the stock market or siphoned out of currencies. People are starting to buy art and use it as an asset, okay, or wine or whatever the thing is. But that painting's not worth 60 million. The paint and the frame and the paper, it's not worth 60 million. What is worth is basically the value that somebody puts on it. And if somebody's willing to pay 60 million, that's what it's worth. So you've got to remember with shares, we as the market people, we decide what we want to pay for a share. We have a choice. We can either buy it, we can go short, or we can do nothing. And by doing nothing, we can affect the price. And now you're starting to see this again with the property market, of course, aren't you? When people think their house is worth a million pounds, or whatever, is your house worth a million? Is the bricks and the land worth that much? At the end of the day, it's what people are willing to pay for it. And as the perception changes, the price of your property is going to change. And of course, there's demand and supply and what have you. And, you know, and over the long term, yeah, that can be true. But what makes something change in price is your perception and what you're willing to pay for it. And remember with stock, we're always looking for, you know, anyone that buys shares, including me, we're stupid. Right, we've bought a worthless piece of paper. When I say share, it could be a covered warrant, it could be anything. 
But our view is that there's somebody who's even more stupid than me who's willing to buy it at a higher price. But that's always what you've got to remember. Nobody needs to own any shares, but it's the perception. <laughs>